But, but I wanted us to talk about the school calendar because there's mm. been something uh, so rather untidy about this whole yes, thing. I yeah. mean, um, granted that, you know, the, the infections are still here and everything, but this thing of, it's almost like taking the emotions of parents and uh, students on a, on a roller, roller coaster. coaster. I mean, how yeah. do you do that? Yeah. Uh, because right now we are talking about congestion in schools. We don't have money. Didn't we know that? Like, <laughs> is it something that has just happened? Uh, he won't. <laughs> you know, um, I remember in the beginning when they said, okay, so possibly September, and then uh, maybe those who are doing exams would, would, would do their exam mm -hmm. in April, and then not September, and then maybe the end of the year, and then, okay, you know, uh, we were dramatically told that, you know, the school year is cancelled. Um, yeah. And then now we're being told that even January might not happen. The situation with what's happening in the schools reminds me very much of what happened when we were under restrictions of movement. The argument when we were under restrictions of movement was that we were giving the government time mm -hmm. to build up their resources, to get more beds, to get more ICU capacity, uh, you know, to in fact hire those more doctors for which we got money from donors and the World Bank. So that once we reopened the country, so to speak, or there was uh, increased movement, we were ready. We even had the reducible minimums from the president. Mm -hmm. And then what happened when we reopened? We said, well, you know, it's not quite where we thought we would be. It seemed like a wasted opportunity. What did we do during those three months when we were restricted from movement? We're supposed to have built up our capacity mm -hmm. to fight COVID. Likewise, we've, we have this entire year to build up whatever capacity is required in schools. And granted, I know the situation in schools has been quite dire even before COVID-19. I mean, you know, the situation in classrooms, when you take a look at classrooms mm -hmm. collapsing, uh, you know, congestions in the classrooms, um, but there is this amount of time and period we have to do something about it. But also what is interesting to me is how you have these conflicting statements from the Ministry of Education, when isn't the Ministry of Education a part of the National Emergency Response Committee? It is. At that point where they issue this and then, you know, no, but it's not this. Is there not a discussion at that point at the level of the committee? And then again, even just the manner in which these things are being done. I don't know, did I see something about buy your laptops using help money? You know, there needs to be a little more um, empathic communication, considering parents are at their wits end, honestly. Um, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. The issue of whether they will get refunds from the school fees they paid is still, you know, up in the air. Uh, school teachers who are on the board of management are also... Uh, you know, suffering school, non-teaching staff have also lost their jobs and lost some revenue. It, there just seems to be nothing that is agreed and they come up and say one thing and then change it and then say something else and then, the, you know, it's up yeah, and down Jamila, and sideways. To, yeah. yeah, when you speak about not agreeing and, and losing livelihood and all that, we recently um, found out from the Association of Private Schools that yeah. about 124 of them have written to the association they're seeking to close mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. This would affect about 43,000 For yes, 43, students. They're auctioning equipment, their desks, the tables, the everything that their schools they're auctioning them because they have the yeah. things that are not working, there are no students in school and of course these private schools depend on the school fees from the students to be able to continue uh, with their operations. So about 120 plus of them have asked to close shop. 43,000 students are not sure whether they'll have schools come January if we do open schools then. And then this other debate about online learning or not, especially in the universities, has also become a big issue. Universities were to open in September. But then, of course, the minister said they're not prepared, so we're moving it. In the meantime, students should study online. The same issue we were seeing about primary schools and secondary schools and children being unable to access uh, internet connection and have the mm -hmm. equipment to do it is also coming out in the universities. And Wasu spoke about this saying, we cannot continue having just a small fraction of the students being able to study online and a huge number of them being unable to yep. do so. I think we are worried that it is true that our education uh, now is a mess. 2020, yes, has been counted as Akuna Masomo. But then now when you hear the minister saying, come January beginning, we may not be able to do this, everyone is at, at wit's end. Students are confused. Parents are unsure what to do about the situation, Joe. I don't know. A, a very untidy thing, Joe. And I thought such a situation would have called for creative ways of dealing with the whole question. And number two, this was a very good opportunity 
for the government to use some of the resources that were initially allocated to schools mm. um, for infrastructure development. This would have also created employment for the many, many young people who are out there. You know, you can imagine if you were to build classrooms in every um, uh, primary school, um, in every secondary school, you're talking about 30,000 plus uh, schools. This would have given an opportunity for young people to get, you know, opportunities to earn a, li a living as they make a difference and create an opportunity for students when they come back to school, they will have better, more facilities. And creativity. And I mean, creativity. Yeah. Unfortunately, Do even makeshift things, you know, just for this period because, I mean, it's, yeah. it's an unprecedented thing. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, like, for example, and, 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 and I don't know how some of these decisions are made. You have many young people who are doing Kazim Tani, mm -hmm. you know, doing a bit of clean up here and there. You can build a school, it, a classroom. It, wouldn't it probably be a lasting um, investment if you used, let's say, half of those resources to build classrooms and you will still employ young, yeah. many young people. Not that, that that money will go anywhere. It will still be used by those people, young people in uh, villages to build uh, classrooms and facilities and in schools. And they can do prefabs. It yeah, doesn't yeah. even and have yeah, to I mean, be... Like they, yeah. they did, they, like in other countries, they did there. even like yeah. hospitals and fields and right. stadiums yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I mean, you can do makeshift things so that at least this period, because I mean... Yes. There's no doubt that this thing will end at some point. Mm -hmm. So at least do things that will make it possible for kids. And to... lasting. Yeah. So I, I, I think these need to, to you know, think thoroughly and deeply about parents, and not just parents, but also students. You know, they see, yeah. they watch news, they see what's happening, mm -hmm. and so it gets into their hearts and 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 and, and, and minds. You're telling them. There's a possibility, then there's no possibility, there's a possibility, there's no possibility. Yeah. It, it, it's a little confusing. Okay, is it at the point at which... Yeah, we need to, we need to <laughs> take this whole...